soul of the city. What's going on, St. Louis City fans? Welcome to Soul of the City. Today is April the 23rd. It is our boy Milo's birthday today. He turns 25 on this beautiful Sunday afternoon, a quarter of a century. R.I.P. He's 24 years older than uh, St. Louis City. And <laughs> <Yep>. uh, today... <laughs> my son. <laughs> it It's an it's an all right day. I think we can walk away from last night Could've. with... Uh, with a smile, I think it's not the worst result in the world. What did you guys think of the game last night against the Rapids? Well, um, we definitely got dominated for at least two-thirds of the game. But, I mean, going to Colorado, we kind of knew they were going to be a tough team to play against. They're playing at home in the altitude. Um, a tie is not the worst thing. Mm-mm. Yeah. Definitely could have been a lot worse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If oh. it weren't for, for Roman Berkey, I mean, yeah. Roman Berkey was going superhero mode last night. They had 13 shots on target out of 21, and Berkey had 12 saves. That's a lot of shots. Yeah. So the defense was not on last that's night. That's getting to, like, hockey-level amount yeah. of shots. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, so, um, so Berkey was definitely our player of the game. Yeah, man of the match should have been him. Hands down, no questions asked. Yeah. I think if we can somehow come out of that game 1-0... Berkey is that's like top that's top five performances of his career. That's yeah. a highway robbery if we came out of that <laughs> with a win. Yeah, I, I don't mean, think we could have. I never expected a win. I, I I mean, maybe for that like twenty minute period where mm-hmm. we were good. <laughs> well, there was that Stroud chance in the second half where he was basically five feet from the goal and he it was an open goal and he hits it wide off of the cross. So if they score that, and then you know the five minutes later, Alm scores that second goal, and we're up two zero. I mean, we could easily win that. It's just but, such a, it, it's yeah. such an interesting scenario because you look at the game and it ends one one, and you could say that really either team could have walked away with three points from this game. You can say that you yeah. know we're happy to walk away with a point playing away from home. We could have won that game if it weren't for one final mistake in the stoppage time in the second half and for Colorado I mean they could have beat us five nothing if Roman Berkey wasn't going crazy yeah yeah absolutely yeah what was their expected goal they had well their expected goal on target which I feel like is a much better indicator so that's that's your expected goals like based on where the players actually place their shots on target yeah and what was that and they had an expected goal on target of 3.04 to our zero point five three, <laughs> <laughs> so they should have won three to one. Yeah, three to At three least. to half. If it weren't for Berkey, it would have been three I, one. I just feel like if we were gonna, it looked like we decided to park the bus after we scored. But it's like you can't just park the bus with a four four two or with a four two three one either. Yeah. Put the Put the defense in if you're going to park the bus. We looked not even kind of like scoring. We'll, yeah. I, we'll get to that later in the yeah. game. But, there, yeah, the, it was discombobulated even still in the second half. Yeah. Um, but to the first half. But, yeah, in this game, we did see one pretty large lineup change. Uh, we saw Indiana Vasilev uh, sub off for Akil Watts in this game. And... Mm-hmm. S- from minute one, something kind of looked off about the team. Yeah, his very first pass, he uh, it was like a five five foot pass or ten foot pass or something, and he he didn't even put it on the ground for his teammate. He like popped it up to them and made it impossible for the teammate to settle it. Um, and from there, it was just all downhill pretty much. Yeah, he we figured he was going to play in a defensive role tonight, just like Indiana has, just like Blom has in the past. But he's just not quite up to scuff. I don't think that he's first team quality just yet. Uh, I don't understand how he got the start. Really, me either. I like I was talking to Jonah, and I feel like he had to be a, doing some crazy shit in practice or right. something because yeah. every other performance that we've seen from him has been like last Lackl- night. Yeah, it's been lackluster. I feel like he dribbles the ball a lot, and he's pretty good at it, but he does it too much, and then yeah. he loses it. Or he does. He can't seem to like decide when to make the pass. He's not that aware either. You yeah. don't see him checking checking behind him. You don't see him looking around before he receives the ball. It, he didn't look comfortable. But maybe, 
I mean, one theory was that they're resting Vasilev for the Tuesday game because yeah. we have that midweek game this week. Um, so, you know, maybe maybe that's why. I would have rather seen him start in that, you know, against yeah, a much worse play. team than yeah. an MLS team at home. Mm-hmm. Like, in the altitude, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We also don't... N- I don't know that much about Omaha Union. Yeah. I mean, there can always be sleeper USL teams yeah. who can come out and do some crazy, crazy nonsense. True. It's true. Very um, true. But yeah, I mean, going into the game, they kind of took the game by force from minute one. They had, uh, they were playing lots of long balls, as we kind of predicted in the preview. Um, and they had three offsides in the first half, pretty much all in the first like 10 or 15 minutes. But after that, they were kind of making those runs in behind. And we looked really exposed in the back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They, yeah, the long ball in behind, the, those players were, in fact, rapid. Max was rapid. Cabral mm-hmm. was rapid. And they made those runs in behind on the flanks and even up the middle. There was one uh, really clear opportunity. I think it, it. I think it fell to Acosta, where it was over the top, and he had a touch on a pretty poor finish in the. I mean, there's so many Colorado chances in this game yeah, that were really that were really good. And most, I mean, most if not all were a long ball into the corner when our our fullback was pushed up trying to help the press, and it was just Tim Parker or Hebert having to run back and kind of hold up play. And they looked beat. I yeah. mean, they were running all night. Yeah, <laughs> that was like an onslaught of just because. Yeah, when they were getting those offsides at first, I was like, okay, so this is why Colorado's not that good because they're just mm-hmm. not that good. But then, like, they slowly adapted, and yeah. I was, <laughs> I was shook. That it was kind of scary how good they were looking. I mean, their finishing was terrible. Yeah. Not that Roman Berkey didn't do a hell of a job, but yeah, yeah, they still were just. A couple of their shots. I think Berkey had two or three hard saves in yeah. that game. The rest of them pretty much were, were straight to him. Nothing, That's nothing true. crazy. None of them were too crazy besides maybe a couple. But what I will say is he seemed to like catch all of the saves, yeah. which I was impressed with. Yeah. A lot of them, you know, they, they were pretty close to him, but you still see a lot of keepers trying to like punch those out. But Berkey caught at least 11 or, or 12 of them. Like yeah, on the first try without bouncing it. So I was he, happy to see that. He showed his experience last night. I wish yeah. we could learn how to play the long ball like they did last night. Mm-hmm. Because whenever we do the long ball, it just doesn't work really. Well, I think it works best when you have a winger who's even with that back line, but all the way out on the wing. And usually when we have the ball, we play a lot more narrow. Um, and it's kind of like John Nelson and Jake Nerwinski providing the width. But if they're pushed up all the way like that, I mean, that's not really sustainable, I think. Mm -hmm. We would just be exposed to counterattacks. Yeah, agreed. All the time. But, um, yeah, I mean, they were definitely stretching us very thin. Their midfield wingers would come short to their center backs when the center backs had the ball. And John Nelson and Norwinski would push up on that because, you know, that's how we press. And then they would just play it over the top into the the space in the corner. It looked really easy yeah. on those plays. And honestly, that's how Seattle was beating us too. Mm-hmm. Like they had players dropping short and then making that overload to the corners. It looked really obvious. Yeah. Like every time you could see St. Louis do what they were doing, like start the press the way that we've seen it in the past. But it's it's just so obvious that you know Nervitsky or Nelson's going to come out and check that mm-hmm. ball. But all of a sudden, there's all this space that they leave behind them on the wing that is so free, and it's yeah, it's it's obvious that they're gonna play a ball out there because nobody's there anymore. Yeah. And that's why I feel like we either had to go defensive or change the change the plan. I guess change the plan either way. It did look like we didn't really change the plan. I mean, we got the goal mm-hmm. by changing the plan a little bit, but I feel like after a while, we just went back to I don't even know just. Yeah. If you're not pressing and getting results, then stop pressing or you're going to be tired. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's kind of what we saw going in. I mean, is there anything else in the first half you guys want to talk about? Um, Are we talking about Colorado chances? Because we could do that for <laughs> that's probably That's pretty much 30 all the minutes. first half was, <laughs> right, to be honest. True. So, I mean, yeah, going into the second half, uh, we subbed 
Akil Watts, put on Vasilev, and I mean that seemed to instantly solve the all the problems we saw in the yeah, first half. Definitely, we had possession of the ball. We were making passes, stringing them together. We were pushing up the field as a team, mm-hmm. and then our press just looked so much better as well. And we were able to win the ball back and you know send Alm and Stroud in behind a couple times. Um, and that's actually how that Stroud chance popped up that we were talking about. It was a fast break off a turnover. Alm crossed the ball into Stroud, who was inside the six yard box, and he missed it left. Yeah, like you got to put that on target. His Did- xG on that chance was was point seven. Like even if it hits off the keeper, at least put it on target. Yeah. Like yeah. he does come out and make up for it. I will give yeah. him that. Two minutes later. Two minutes later, uh, he's running down the wing. It was another counter attack, was it mm-hmm. not? Yeah. Plays a beautiful, delicious ball Pinpoint. all the way across to the back post to Rasmus Alm, who has you know pretty easy finish. Not in, not like the easiest of finishes. It but lands right on his foot. That's the good part about yeah, it. Yeah, it was a delicious ball uh, yeah. from Stroud. Delicious. So he, so he absolutely makes up for, for that miss in that situation for sure. So that that shot probably came right around the penalty spot, maybe a little bit to the right. But that XG was only a point three compared to Stroud's point seven. Hmm. So just, you know. Just put it on target, bro. <laughs> XG is sometimes so goofy to me. No, it makes sense. I mean, yeah. Stroud was stat wide makes, open. The stat makes sense, but I feel like trying to draw, I don't know. I guess you can look at the XG of this game, and it's pretty obvious that Colorado could have, should have won this game. I think so. But it's just it's just an interesting stat. It's one that I have not even heard of until we started following the MLS. And it is interesting to think about associating a you know a number with every single goal scoring opportunity that there is. I just don't know how how valuable it really is. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm anti statistics as well, Riley. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we we've established that making. Except isn't. here, when I hear point seven, and, and this dude didn't even hit the frame of the goal. Yeah, that's just point seven is pretty high. Yeah, that's rough, but it's okay. He did make up for it. Yep, it's true. And we were winning then at that point. Um, <laughs> so, unfortunately, Jao Klaus got hurt uh, during the celebrations or a few minutes later or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, right after kickoff. So, they subbed him and subbed Stroud around the same time for Ostrak and Celio. Um, and Celio at first was playing on the left, which I really liked. Um, I thought he had some good dribbles. There was one I remember vividly of him kind of at the top of the box and he kept like fake shooting and like dribbling a little bit more than taking another fake shot. And he oh. beat like three or four defenders. Yeah, He cut all the way across mm-hmm, to the left side and he shot it and the defender like slid and made a last ditch, um, you know, block. So I thought he looked really good when he first came on. And then we kind of get into, so in the first half, the chemistry on, and the entire team was totally off. I think, you know, I hate to point out Akil Watts, but I think that that role is so vital that it just shows that the team doesn't really know what to do with somebody new in that position. But then in the second half, Indiana Vasilev comes on, and all of a sudden we're stringing passes back together. We're, we're going on counterattacks. But once Klaus has to come off, we see Celio move over to the right, or... It was that second batch of substitutions. Yeah, yeah. Once, uh, who was it that came on? Um, Miguel Perez came on for Alm, and Pedro came on for Nelson. But you kind of saw Celio go over to the right side, and he just didn't look dangerous. The chemistry went off again. I think. I think those substitutions. There were too many substitutions. I feel like it might have happened too quick. Or and I feel like. Your boy Stroud, I feel like he deserved to stay on. I don't, I don't know. I'm sure the the altitude, you yeah, know, played a part in that. Cause but he's a machine. Yeah, he does. He did all. He was also on a yellow. His typical yellow Always. card. Of and this one was a pretty early one, right? <laughs> I think so. He needs to chill out. I'm here for it. So as long as he keeps it yellow, you know, he's and, just yeah. getting. He's just getting cautioned. So I'm assuming that Jao Klaus is going to be out at least. I mean, what? Some weeks. It's it's pretty bad when it's you see somebody get hurt from he no did contact. Walk it off. Yeah. So, 
They said I mean, it was. He went, they said it was down. quad, and they said that they were going to continue to monitor. I don't know that I'm that concerned. We probably won't see him play against Omaha, but I would. I think he might be back for next weekend. I don't think it was anything too. I serious. hope it was just something small. Yeah, that's what I hope. Yeah, but Van Dyke walked off the field. <laughs> Was that an ACL? F- yeah, <laughs> that destroyed his you know career. Anyway, anyway, um, shout but out yeah. Everton. Anyway, shortly after that, <laughs> after uh, after Klaus got subbed off, and you know after our chemistry kind of started going downhill, it seemed like we were gonna try to preserve the one zero victory and just kind of maybe park the bus and not really press as hard, um, and we just kind of sat back and then maybe once they crossed more into like our final third we would start pressing but that did not work no Mm -mm. (laughs) at all they were just passing around uh passing through the middle finding people out wide Mm -hmm. crossing the ball taking shots everything they're doing everything we were just (laughs) standing around doing couldn't really get good clearances either anything over their back line so they just get to recycle and come back on the attack yeah they're playing the ultimate low block it was a bad sign when we just started booting the ball every time we got it back yeah that's not a good sign and i mean i'm I said it on the the pregame episode, you know, I wanted to see the team go out and play for a win. And in that scenario, I'm totally fine with going low block if it works and if we're, you know, if we're tight defensively, not allowing a lot of opportunities. Which we weren't. (laughs) I feel that was not the case. (laughs) Add another defender instead of. Yeah. If we were going to go for the win, then yeah. Why are you putting in attacking playmaking midfielders? Yeah, I didn't. Well, I don't get that. I think I think Miguel Perez came on and did a pretty good job of playing the defensive have, role. He had a good. I mean, he looked like comfortable with the ball as well. Yeah, he was holding it. He looked, he looked a, lot a lot better, better. in Seattle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but my thing is like, if we're gonna try to defend our one zero lead, our whole entire defensive thing this whole year has been the high press, and us not high pressing felt kind of to me like we just weren't playing defense. So, I think that our press is the best form of defense that we have, and it just seemed like we were like, mm, "Nah, let's just let's just take it easy." Yeah, that's what it seemed like. I feel like Hebert had a really good game, but yeah. I also feel like Parker got fr- <laughs> he got burnt like several times, and th- yeah. that's not to say that the left back and the right back weren't leaving him out to dry. Yeah, but. He was getting burnt, man. Like, they were zooming past him. I think yeah. Hebert's a lot faster than Parker. Mm-hmm. I hate to I hate to bring up the Nervitsky agenda again, but he was getting cooked in this game. <laughs> yeah. Seriously, like, fried, chicken fried Sunday morning. Like, it did not look good from his end. But I don't feel like Nilsson looked that much better when he came on. I mean, he conceded. You're talking about Pedro? Yeah, Pedro. Yeah. Well, Pedro came on for Nelson. Um, yeah. I'm yeah. Tripping. Pedro. Yeah. 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 He didn't. He he was marking the guy who scored the goal or Barrios. It was his side. It kind of. It was kind of weird that play. That it was like because it was like it was a pass that didn't quite look like it would make it through. I think Leuven yeah. and oh, Hebert yeah, and Hebert standing on Barrios. But the pass is played kind of to the right shoulder of Barrios, and he just makes a run inside, blasts the shot in the upper ninety. There's no, there's nothing Berkey can do about that. Yeah, and yeah. it just sucks because Berkey, we could have bailed him out an infinite number of times in this game, and instead we just let them have chance on target after chance on target. It really is unfortunate. I feel for Roman Berkey because I've been in that situation before where. <sighs> You just can't get any help defensively, yeah. and you're just looking up, and there's nothing that you can do as the goalie. Yeah, I mean, all those shots you got to give him credit, but that goal that they scored, there's nothing that he could have done. Uh-uh. Like, this is a great finish. It was a great pass from Diego Rubio, like through our defense, and then Barrios was just open on goal, and he had the entire goal to shoot at. So Barrios he the corner and and just banged yeah. it in. Barrios came on and was an impact substitution. Absolutely. He came on and because Colorado, their changes in this game were were really weird. They second half, they were like, all right, this isn't working. Let's give all the young guys an opportunity. Just pulled four of their players <laughs> off the field, brought on four youngins and just said, let them cook. Yeah. 
and which I, mean, I thought was and cool. Cook, they did. Yeah, they had the one guy that came on who I think he got a yellow card. Um, Preso Mbange, number ninety-seven. Yeah, he was really saucy, and he was just slicing up our whole midfield. Yeah, and then Barrios, he actually scored the last-minute equalizer last week against Charlotte as well. Oh. Um, and then he did the same thing against. So he's us. an off-the-bench player. Yeah, super sub. We need an off-the-bench player, super sub. Yeah. Who could be him? I wanted it to be Celio. I think if he stays on that left-hand side yeah, in that game and doesn't get moved around. I agree. Him and Adeneron, you know, has been brought on. Yeah. But he didn't had... see Adeneron in this game. Yeah. I did like to, I did like that Geo stayed on for the entirety of the game. I'm sure if Klaus didn't get hurt though, he would have been the one to probably to sub. probably. But Klaus was I don't know, man. Klaus was invisible that yeah. whole game. Mm-hmm. Geo did have a way better game than Klaus. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah I mean, he's just... Klaus is technically gifted. I just feel like Geo's just... He's He's yeah. got techers. Like, he he makes settles that I don't... I don't think any other player on our team would make. Mm-hmm. I, that... I mean, people are blasting balls at him. Put him in the air. He's bringing them down. I mean, we just needed... I don't even know what we're going to do without... If Klaus gets hurt for, like, you know, two weeks, wh- would we just start Geo up top? Fourth, two, three, one. Or, I mean, a Deneron could take the Klaus role. That's what I would like to see and stay 4-4-2. I think the 4-4-2 is my favorite formation that we I play. don't think it's the best for away. I think we need a better away formation. Mm. I think the 4-4-2 lets... Like, that really plays Geo to like his best strengths because he can kind of like float around and get the ball and play passes in behind or you know take make runs yeah. yeah so i think the 442 is really geared towards him honestly yeah i think we need to learn how to park the bus because yeah I, we de- we tried it last game and yeah. it just didn't work i can't i don't think you can i mean it's good that we got a point but you need to be able to to park the bus once yeah. more, especially when you're away, because we're gonna go away and face some much better teams than yeah. Colorado. We, we play, play LAFC LA at the away. end of May, yeah, in LA. And if we can't, that's gonna be a hard point. Yeah. That'd be. I'm not. I'm, I'm hoping for a point there. Their fans yeah. are insane. That crowd is crazy. Agreed. Yeah. One interesting statistic about last night, just around the MLS. Uh, out of the top five, Seattle was the only top five team in the West to not drop points. Uh, LAFC also had a draw. Dallas lost and San Jose lost. So mm. some 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 poor form coming out of the top five in the West last night. I guess Seattle That's still good are, for us. Yeah, definitely. We're still in first, tied with Seattle though. But yeah, um, there I can wish- be no there can be two winners. <laughs> we do have a higher goal difference. Sporting Kansas City did uh, lose their an, a third in a row <laughs> last night. I was ho- I was hopeful that they were going to beat New England. Why? Uh, so that they could widen the gap for us for the supporter shield mm. over on the over on the east side. New England are first in the east. Yeah, but also they they said they were the soccer capital of the United States. So I'm okay with them. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Agreed. getting stomped week in week out, week in week out. Wake up, repeat. Get stomped. You suck. <laughs> it does. It does make the draw feel a little bit better, I guess. What? I just hope they don't show up and upset us. <laughs> That'd be. W- yeah, it would be over for us. I think. <laughs> yeah. I think we are. This entire podcast might get canceled if that happens. <laughs> so uh, yeah, we're going to Union, or I guess Union Omaha. We're playing them at home. Yeah. Right? So um, do you guys think we're going to see a lot of players arrested? In that game, or? I think we're gonna see some some of the talent off the bench. I hope Jensen starts. Yeah. I don't know. I think since it's a Tuesday game, I don't want to say that Carnell would look at it like a training match because obviously it's a pretty serious game. Mm-hmm. But I think at the same time, you know, we have a a midweek game. Why not put the starters out there and and let them put some work in? I think it. I think we'll definitely see some off the bench players, but I wouldn't be surprised to see. You know, I definitely expect to see Lucas Bart Bartlett play against yeah, Omaha. Absolutely, I think Pedro should I bet play Yaro, too. I bet Yarrow plays too. I bet uh, it's a lot of the city two guys or like the players who are you kind of like in between teams. You know, mm-hmm. um, so like like you said, those guys, um, Owen O'Malley, that 
Creighton guy mm-hmm. that we picked up in the super draft. Yeah. Um, yeah. I guess I thought Vasilev was going to start because he didn't start this past game, but maybe Akil Watts will. I don't. I don't. I have no idea. Honestly. I just after the Akil Watts performance last night, it does make me a little bit skeptical about some of the City Two players. Like, obviously, I think Celio is exciting because he's an attacking player and we get to immediately kind of see what he's got. But with Watts, I mean, he he's kind of got nothing to show. He um, looked really nervous. Yeah. I feel like I don't want to, like, trash him because, I mean, it's a big step up yeah. out of nowhere. I think way too. I think we just got to get our City 2 knowledge up. I think we got to watch a little bit more City 2 to try to get a better grasp of how these players kind of play. Because as it stands, you know, we just see him at the top flight and we can only draw our conclusions upon those games. And I just haven't been impressed so far. Watching his play, I feel like he would be a lot better with more confidence because I feel like he was very hesitant to to like pull the trigger on passes or would wait too long to try to get rid of the ball, you know? Just like he was overthinking it a way too. I feel like he can dribble pretty well, and I mean, if you can dribble pretty well, if you can get enough confidence to pass the mm-hmm. ball better, then like, I'm not saying you should be a starter, but like, yeah, he deserves his flowers if he does. Yeah, and it's hard to get in form with that little of playing time before then. But right. it, it was. A, I think a lot of the way we played is on Carnell against Colorado. I I feel like. I mean, putting Watts he, out there kind of hung him out to dry. Definitely. Um, it seemed like it messed up like the chemistry with the whole rest of the team, yep. too. Like, yep. a central midfielder, like, is so involved with the play. Like, you have to pass to everyone at some point in the game, basically. Um, and everyone just looked weird when they were, like, running, you know, off of Watts or passing him the ball. Yeah. Like, they didn't know what he was going to do next. He, he was a total outsider in yeah. the lineup. That That's, like th- That is what it felt like. People were, like, yeah, not looking to pass to him when he was on the ball. People just kind of didn't know what to do. They didn't – it seemed like they didn't know what he was capable yeah. of. Yeah. So, I, I'm, oh, I'm totally here for City 2 players to make their way up and play for the main squad. But I think it has to be there. There needs to be levels to it. I think we need to see. Yeah, you do, more. You, you should have be like having scorching form in the games that you get your minutes in right. to be starting. Yeah. I don't understand. I just yeah, don't the start, understand the, the start, call up. Do, I I do hear you on on maybe resting Vasilev for but there the were Omaha game. Other players we could have started over Watts that probably would have had more. You could have tried. You could have tried Miguel Perez again. Yeah. Yeah. He looked good. Yeah. yeah. He came on and did, he. His, the, his positional awareness was really good. You could see him looking around, making sure that the midfield, that he was in front of passing lanes. He he looked solid. And that's why confidence for these young kids, that's why starting anybody, like, you just can't do that. I mean, we started Miggy, and we saw how that went. I mean, the moment went to his head, I yeah. feel like, and instantly. I was going to say, that was the only game that he didn't look that good. Yeah. Was the game that he started against Seattle. He's in high school, man. So <laughs> He's got grown people who yelling bad things at him <laughs> from the stands. Yeah. But, I mean, he's he has looked good every other game. He's looked good this past game. Akil Watts. I haven't been impressed at all. Yeah, I mean, he hasn't really played that much, to be fair. But even mm-hmm. the times that he subbed on at right back or center mid for the last, you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes, he just, like, I don't know. I feel like I could do what he does, you know. <laughs> does he, does he, <laughs> bold claim. <laughs> like, he just, like, standing there. You see there. how much he runs? <laughs> yeah, I definitely couldn't run that much, but. In Colorado. <laughs> At 10,000 feet up and in the air. Maybe that had a part to do with it. Maybe he's got lungs like crazy, but it just didn't work. Yeah. And I feel like Carnell needs to stop experimenting in games that are obviously going to be harder. Yeah. Just away games, really. To so, put. so for this USL or for this uh, Open, Open Cup, Cup game, um, we're playing a team, you know, in USL. Uh, so they're not necessarily a harder game, but it is for a tournament. So I guess, I don't know. There's some balancing to do for don't sure. Don't play down. Yeah. And that's a hard thing. This It's easier said than done, I feel like. Yeah. Sometimes. I'm actually so excited that there's like new tournament games coming up because it gives us more to talk about on the Wednesday episodes. Mm-hmm. That's what I just thought about. 
True. Ooh, I'm ready to talk about Open <laughs> Cup. Open Cup is St. Louis's tournament. We've got funeral homes with more Open Cups than your entire city. Funeral homes. Ever heard of Kudis? <laughs> Look them up. <laughs> I have no idea what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> Back in the early days, the uh, the funeral homes in St. Louis made a team or like oh, yeah, a yeah, couple yeah. teams. Yeah, this was before CYC, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, and they won some of the early Open Cups. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We would. Have, we, I don't have the the Your wiki page refresher walking. in my in my head right now. Yeah, Refresh. but yeah, we're coming for that trophy. It'll be interesting. We're to going see for what the we treble do. this year. <laughs> yeah, I have I have a Union Omaha's stats here, so. They've played four games in the USL. They've won one, drawn two, and lost one. Only scored four goals, only conceded three. Um, it's not looking good, bro. Yeah, they Both. look like a okay team in the USL, and hopefully that means they're automatically worse than St. Louis City. So yeah. I'm, I'm hoping that we put on the starters for the first half and <laughs> just go have some practice. Got to no. keep that high press. Let's just press the hell out of them. Mm, uh, I don't know about all what? that. I no, say I let the boys go to. out and have fun and score some goals. But like, but no better way. You talk, you don't, don't get them too you, tired for the, the weekend. You know? yeah, it's a no Tuesday way, game. No better way to score goals than than, than high the ball press. Back. Take advantage of a USL. Maybe they're not the best USL team in the world. We've seen it in the MLS. People are, are primed to make mistakes. So why not take advantage and press the hell out of them? You don't want to press them? Okay, fair Do point. you like this team? I forget. I'm confused, man. I was kind of hoping that I'm Klaus. Cooked. <laughs> I was kind of hoping that Klaus would be back for this game just so that he could score against yes. you know worse worse opposition and get his confidence back up. Yeah, he's falling out of form a bit. Yeah, yeah. he looked. Yeah, he started off strong, but yeah, there was that there was that one opportunity that he had in the first half where <laughs> Geo kind of shouldered it back to him. Oh my god! And he was lining up the shot. I'm like, oh my god, he's gonna. He's gonna smoke this, <laughs> yeah. and he just like I don't know if he hit the ground or like what. He just like totally takes all the power out of it, and yeah. it just trickles to the goalkeeper. That was yeah. so I was, uh, I was it was weird. Yeah, it was not impressive. That was like that was our so one. That was like him. our one opportunity of the first half, <laughs> and a huge one. It would have been a great goal. Yeah, it was outside the box though. To be fair, was it? Yeah, according to Fot Mob. Really? Yeah. So it was probably a harder shot than it yeah, seemed. For sure. Yeah, but you you liked. His odds, maybe. After his um, goal against, it was at home. Yeah, that mm-hmm. the one outside the box mm-hmm. that he kind of volleyed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, the little half volley. After seeing that, you totally think that yeah. he's, he's putting that one away. He's blasting that one. It yeah. was it was an interesting opportunity. Um, yeah. Yeah, the wing backs or the full backs in this game, Nervitsky and Nelson, were getting cooked. <laughs> I just, it's just so dangerous they're 1v1 on offense and their 1v1 on defense is pretty suspect from time to time it does scare me they're not very quick yeah they're supposed to be our defensive guys (laughs) they're getting cooked (laughs) Nervitsky especially in this game there was there was one opportunity where I can remember him running out to like check that press on a player but he sees a player running in behind him, and he's just stuck in no man's land. Doesn't make a decision, and, and a ball is played right through behind him out out to the wing. Yeah. It's just there's just moments in the game the fullbacks did not look strong. They were yeah. they were our lowest rated players outside of uh, Klaus and Watts mm. in that game, which I think makes I think makes a lot of low sense. low rating for Carnell as well. I feel like he did not adjust in ways that he needed to. Yeah, their system was like. Definitely designed very well to exploit the spaces in our system. And that's Mm -hmm. just putting it all on the television screen for any other team that might want to. Yeah, I mean, they must have learned from Seattle. or I mean, I don't know how. I guess it's just predictable at this point. Sir Sir Carnell, it's time to be able to counter that. Time to adapt. Fought Mob, please add coach ratings (laughs) to your program. Uh, they had 54 accurate long balls against us. Oh, dang. They, 54? 54 accurate. Yeah. And that's, that's what I'm saying when I want to learn how to do long balls like that. Like, our long balls seem to just go to the striker, and it's like, here, try and get ahead on this. <laughs> yeah. Try to settle this somehow with two <laughs> center backs <laughs> jumping with you. Yeah. Well, it, I just don't. Geo's I, good at that. I don't understand how we go from – Playing against identical formate, pretty much identical formations 
Cincinnati, we score four goals and look the the way better side the entire game. And in this game, it's three in the back again. I I don't know how we didn't quite take advantage like we did against Cincinnati. It was unfortunate. Yeah. yeah. They had 100, more than 100 passes and accurate passes than us. Mm-hmm. That's their bad. center. Their center backs, I think, also looked a lot better. Abu Bakar, he was looking really good in that game. They're, he made and, a lot of good passes. Maxo. Yeah, they were pinging long balls. Yeah, uh, they yeah they looked way better than us. <laughs> I yeah. can't believe we got a point the out whole, of that. The whole first half and the whole second half of the second half. Yeah, we can totally be happy with a point. Oh yeah, yeah. like it just sucks because we could have won the game. Yeah. We could have won it. We could have t- walked away with three. That's the only thing that that is holding. We could have, but game. we wouldn't have deserved it. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that, folks, is why scoring too many goals in a game is a bad thing for the next game. But would you rather no, win? That's a myth. Would you rather win and not deserve it, or draw and probably deserve it? Win, mm, uh, win and not deserve it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Who cares? I don't care if we don't deserve yeah. it. I really don't think we deserve the draw either. Yeah. <laughs> no, dude. I mean, Berkey alone would have like deserved it yeah. yeah imagine if we slot in like a different mls goalkeeper onto st yeah. louis city in this game we and it's like in five one it's five one four one what makes me feel good about it is he kind of just makes it look easy too which is always a good sign with a goalkeeper like allison we're like they're just in the Berkey's right better. place Berkey's better. <laughs> yeah Berkey. i agree actually <laughs> <laughs> liverpool sign Berkey, please um but just being in the right place at the right time, knowing how to position yourself to make the easy save. Rick's our, our goalie guy. He's I played goalie. Resident I was expert. starting goalie in third grade, I think. Actually, Marlowe is technically our resident goalkeeper. Yeah. Extraordinaire. Riley was his backup in high school, but he, yeah. he played in the field. Too. If you guys go to St. Louis uh, High School Sports <laughs> and go check out the soccer page for 2017, I do have a 100%. Uh, win record, 100% <laughs> clean sheet record. It was only one game, but I mean, <laughs> that's, pretty good. that's pretty good for a back for one. That's like my my 2,000 batting average. <laughs> 2,000 OBS. Slugging. OBS, yeah. 1,000 yeah. batting, batting average. average. Yeah. One AB. <laughs> yeah. One at bat double. <laughs> oh, joy. All right. So I think, yeah, I think we covered pretty much everything. Yeah. Agreed. Kind of a hard game to watch. It yeah. was okay. It was okay. It was yeah. one of those ones I could have taken a nap if it wasn't my favorite team, you know, not, not missing much. Mm-hmm. But for for the Colorado fans, I'm sure it was great. I mean, that's the second game in a row that he scored in, like, the 90th plus minute. Barrios, yeah. yeah. Barrios, the man with hair of ramen noodles. <laughs> he was so – he was just built weird. Yeah. He was so short yeah. and stocky, and then he has that ugly haircut. <laughs> yeah. But he was shifty. He was yeah. getting he was, in there and making their, moves. He changed their team, honestly, yeah. after he subbed on. Yeah. He was, it, I really couldn't stand watching him <laughs> just run around and do that to our team. It was pretty annoying. Agreed. If only it was anyone else. Yeah. If only – if any of their other players had taken that shot, it would have gone right at Berkey again. Yeah. But he really slotted that. And with that, I think we're going to wrap it up, folks. You think so? Uh, Do you guys have anything else you want to talk about? I just wanted to say that I'm totally down for Indy. Oh, I remember what I was going to say. I feel like our clear opportunities on goal are nine times out of ten coming from the Mm counterattack. And I want to see us try to create more opportunities outside of the box, like without like whipping balls in and like. I want to see some better on-target long shots. I think Leuven can do it, and he, like in this game, our biggest opportunities are from the counterattack, and he didn't quite have those opportunities. But I don't know. Yeah, I agree. When we have the ball, and the other team is, you know, all behind the ball, we really struggle to get a chance. Meaningful chances. Yeah. I mean, we'll either cross it to nobody, or we'll take a long shot that's being closed down, and we don't really get a good shot. But, like, I would like to see Geo kind of drop in, do some, like, False give line. and goes, mm-hmm. some some passes out wide. I mean, yeah, we, we just need to we struggle when we have the ball. Maybe we need to, like, there needs to be, instead of some kind of target man at the top of the box, because when Nelson and Nervitsky get these balls on the wide flanks, they just want to cross it every single time. It's like every time they get the ball, 
you feel that they're going to cross it in. And we haven't seen too many goals come from those kinds of play. We've seen a couple, but I want them to switch it up a little bit. Let's make a pass to the middle. I think, yeah, I think we need to be doing 12-hour sessions of Rondo's Pep Guardiola style so that we can get our build-up play to actually work because – when we don't, when we're not working, we just start dumping and chasing, and yeah. it's really hard to watch. Rondo yeah. drill. Yeah, Rondos. Come on, get, come on, Carnell. Come on, Carnell. Get them in Rondos. We need to look like Man City. We need to look like Barcelona. We need Tiki Taka in the yeah. blue. And it's been there from time to time. We've seen Geo Klaus Leuven link up really well and have good chemistry for those quick those quick exchanges. It's there. We just got to keep we refining only, it. We only see it in brief moments though it yeah. like it happens once and then you don't see it again for another and then you go like, 45 and then, yeah, <laughs> and then and 45 minutes go by and you're like please please come back <laughs> it's true it doesn't yeah yeah so, so there's yeah. things we can improve on we're still super happy with this colorado yep. result you know one point away Optimistic. from home ten thousand feet in the air we won't complain about it um that's all we've got for you guys. So thanks for tapping in to this episode of Soul of the City. This is our 18th episode. Thank you guys for all of your support, all of the follows across all socials. You guys are really doing it big. We love you guys, and we can feel the love from you all. So with that, have a great rest of your week, folks. Take it easy. Thanks for tapping in. Peace out. Thank you for watching this episode of Soul of the City, brought to you by First Touch Media and Anchor FM. Make sure to check us out on YouTube at First Touch Media and all of our socials are at First Touch 314. Thank you for watching.